cells and snakes. None of these are hosts of SARS-CoV-2 virus. There's no way for an intermediate host to be spilling over this virus into humans at that market. Can you talk about some of the scientific misconceptions that have caused confusion around the origins of COVID-19? One major uh, misconception is that this SARS research at the WIV was conducted in such a safe, high biosafety level that it could never have leaked. All of this work was done at much less safe levels than people thought. But there are a lot of labs doing this kind of work. Are there similar lapses in safety measures in all of them, including the U.S.? Yes, even labs with no reported biosafety incidents have biosafety incidents. If there are no accidents ever in your lab, that means you're not doing any experiments. And so in the case of the first SARS virus, it escaped from a lab in Singapore, it escaped from BSL-4 in Taiwan, it escaped about four times from a single lab in Beijing when it was being studied back in 2004. And none of these scientists were doing anything crazy with the virus. One of them didn't even work with the virus. Somehow it had contaminated his sample and he got sick. Another massive misconception is that the Wuhan Institute of Virology was built there because it's a SARS hot zone. That is completely untrue. The strongest route by which a SARS virus could get all the way from its home in South China, more than a thousand miles into Wuhan, is, in my opinion, actually dozens of lab personnel crawling into these extremely difficult to reach caves, bringing thousands of bad samples back into the crowded city of Wuhan. It's a very modern city. All of this makes one think that maybe we shouldn't be doing that kind of research. And you're afraid that people will come precisely to that conclusion. It's important for us to understand what is out there. I think it's very valuable. It's not that this research should not be done. The, the question is, how can we make it safer? So maybe we shouldn't be doing it right smack next to an international airport. Maybe we should be doing it in a place where researchers are required to quarantine for two weeks or more between working at those locations and coming back into where there are millions of people in the city. There are ways to make this research safer while still doing it. All you're asking for is an investigation. In an effort to protect scientific research, has the scientific community run the risk of undermining its own credibility? Yes, this science letter that was just published really is a call to return back to science-based discourse. For me, the mistake would be for scientists to show the public that, no, we cannot check ourselves, we cannot audit ourselves. Scientists need to take the leadership, reviewing the research that we've been doing and saying, could this have caused the pandemic? This is a precedent-setting situation. So this is the first time there's been such a plausible scenario of, of a lab leak resulting in a pandemic we really need to establish a protocol and a system where we can investigate no matter where the next possible lab leak pandemic occurs. Because if we don't investigate, then we keep letting these pass and we keep letting it go. We're just going to enter an era of lab-based pandemic. So it's just going to be every five to 10 years, a new virus escaped from a high security lab. We can't let that happen. Alina, thank you very much. Thanks for having me on the show. Alina Chan is a postdoctoral researcher at the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard. <laughs>